Hey everyone, in this video I'll briefly be going over the uh, assumptions that we need to make for uh, the Taylor McCall conical flow. I think it's important to list out the assumptions uh, because when most people are solving problems they don't, and using equations, they don't realize what the limiting assumptions are of that equation and they end up using it for something that, it, that you can't use it for, um, which can be dangerous. So I think that this is a good stepping stone into the actual derivation and hopefully it'll be a quick video, uh, but We'll see. Um, so the first assumption that we make is that it's at z the cone is at a zero degrees angle of attack. Um, this is because if it were at any other angle of attack, we'd have weird three effects happening, and it makes the problem a lot harder to solve, and you won't be able to get a, a two-coupled ODEs or a system of ODEs that you can solve. Uh, so that's the first assumption. The second assumption is that the uh, all the properties along the ray along rays are constant. So that's what DDR is. So uh, a ray, a ray, so this is a picture of the cone. We have the cone in black, we have the shock in red, we have a single ray in green. Uh, it's important to note that the, the rays come from the vertex and go out along the R direction. Um, if you look at my geometry video, you'll see what I mean. Um, that means that the cone surface is actually a ray, and the shock is actually also a ray. So as you go out along this green dotted line, which can be anywhere in between the shock and the cone surface, uh, the properties are constant along that, which means the temperature here is the same as the temperature out here, and that's because uh, this cone is assumed to be uh, infinite, essentially, so it just goes on forever, um, and that's another technically assumption that you make. Um, so if you have like a temperature or pressure variation on, on the cone surface here, and let's just say the pressure is like higher here, and then it decreases and decreases, that means at infinity, what would happen to the pressure? It would like decrease and decrease until it goes negative or something. Um, that would be that would be weird. So um, well, not weird, but um, the assumption that you make is that the, that the properties are constant along the rays, so you don't have to deal with all that uh, crazy nonsense. Uh, the third assumption is that dd phi is equal to zero. This is from the axisymmetric assumption that we made, so um, it's a quasi-2D problem where we're looking at this, it's technically a 3D cone, but we're looking at it in a 2D plane, like this is, you know, the plane is this board right now, and um, if you rotate this cone around the, you know, into 3D space, it would become a cone. Um, so we don't care about the, uh, you know, like the properties are independent of this phi parameter. These two are extremely important in terms of the derivation later, uh, because a lot of things cancel out when you consider that these derivatives are zero. Okay, the fourth assumption is that the shock wave is straight. So, um, the shock wave, when the shock wave is straight, the entropy increase is the same, um, for all streamlines passing through the shock. Uh, if you don't know what a streamline is, you can look at other videos about streamlines. Um, but what this uh, is important for is when you look at uh, Krakow's theorem, um, which relates the kinematic properties of the flow to the thermodynamic properties of the flow, assuming constant entropy, um, along with one of the other assumptions here, down here, uh, means that the flow is irrotational, which is important for this as well. Okay, uh, number five is we're talking about steady flow, so all the time derivatives are equal to zero. This is important for the continuity equation that we'll go over in the next video. Um, so we assume that it's a steady flow, so we're solving for a steady state flow. Um, and like I said, it uh, comes into play in the continuity equation when you're transforming that into spherical coordinates. Number six is that no, there are no body forces, so this, um, this f vector is equal to zero, this body force uh, vector is equal to zero, which means that we're ignoring any gravitational forces, any electromagnetic forces, and so forth. Um, this comes into play in Euler's equations when we're deriving Euler's equation. Uh, 7 and 8 are kind of linked together, so inviscid flow means that we're not, uh, we're assuming there's no frictional effects in the flow, and um, this allows for the use of Euler's equation as well, and then adiabatic assumption is that there's no heat added or taken away to the flow, um, or taken away from the system, and both of these together, uh, incorporated uh, together, give us this isentropic assumption. The isentropic assumption comes into play when you're in talking about uh, Krakow's theorem as well, along with, um, so I guess, I guess that kind of relates a little bit to the shock wave straight, um, because you end up having a gradient of the entropy uh, in that equation. Um, okay, so number nine is that the total enthalpy is constant along the streamline. Number nine, total enthalpy is constant along the streamline. Uh, this is from inviscid adiabatic steady flow with no body forces, so that was all from these other assumptions that we made here. Um, 
And like I said, I come from the plane crocos equation with the gradient of the total enthalpy, allowing for the irrotational assumption. Number 10 is that there's no blowing or suction at the surface of the cone, which means it's impermeable um, to the flow. So like when we're at the cone surface, um, when we're at the cone surface, the, the, we have two velocity components. We have the VR velocity component, which is the velocity component along the ray. And like I said before, the cone surface is a ray. So it's tangent to the cone surface. And then we have, so that's VR. And then we have one that's perpendicular to that, and that's V theta. And that's a theta, not a zero. Um, so what this no blowing reception at the surface of the cone means is that there's no component, there's no normal component of velocity at the surface. Which means that in our numerical computation, when we're solving from the shock down to the cone, once we hit a point where the V theta term is equal to zero, that means we've hit the surface of the cone. Uh, and then the last assumption is that it's a, a calorically perfect gas, or CPG, which means the specific heats are constant. So CP and CV are constant. These come into play when you're talking about the ratio of specific heats, gamma is equal to CP over CV. Um, and those come into play in the final taylor McCall equation that you'll see in the derivation. So this is just an overall video about the assumptions that we make. And I know it seems like a lot and it's kind of boring, but it's really important to know what the limiting factors are because you can't just use this for any type of flow. It's very specific, but it's still useful. So my next uh, video will be going through the actual derivation, like the continuity equation, etc., etc. Okay, so thanks for watching.